In this program, we turn our attention to how economists understand change over longer time periods using mathematics. This type of mathematics is useful for individuals who must save to finance a substantial purchase. How quickly will money grow in a bank account or in some other form of saving? The same concepts can be used by businesses to make decisions about borrowing money to increase capacity. They can also be used to understand how consumers pay back large sums of money borrowed to buy a home. The mathematics of finance will give us an insight into these questions. Does it make sense for people to give up three or four years of earnings in order to obtain a degree? They give up something now for a gain in the future. But does this investment of time make financial sense? Similar questions are involved when we ask if businesses make good decisions in purchasing capital equipment. They have to fund some spending now in the hope of a gain in the future. Sometimes their hopes are fulfilled. For some companies, they are not. Eurotunnel has had far less success than it anticipated when it first opened. The use of the mathematical principles of investment analysis enable us to understand why this has been so. We'll also see that these tools of analysis can be used to look at the growth of national income over time. Countries with relatively low incomes may grow faster if their governments alter their policies. How long will it take for such countries to catch up with those on a higher level of income? Societies also run down their assets. We look at the level of oil stocks and ask how long they will last when the demand for oil keeps rising. The mathematics of economic growth will help us to arrive at a better understanding of these and related issues that are raised in this film. Well, my name is Heike Bosserhoff and at the moment I study business economics in the third year. I live in a terraced house with four other people, with my German friend Jensi and two English guys and one Scot. It's really nice. Heike is a student on a limited budget and cannot afford to save anything out of her income. But she has a desire to do a world tour and has estimated the cost at 6,000 euros. She's been left a sum of 4,800 euros in her aunt's will. She plans to put it in an account that earns 6% interest paid annually. How many years will she have to wait until there are 6,000 euros in her account? She's heard of a speculative high interest account earning 13% annually, but it's much more risky. That's an example of how markets work. You only get higher interest rates as a potential reward for taking bigger risks. Not everyone has the same attitude to risk. Some are risk averse and prefer caution. But if Heike successfully takes the risk, her money will grow faster and she can take the trip sooner. But just how much sooner could she make her trip? So our student has 4,800 euros in the bank. How much will our student have in one year's time if interest is 6%? Well, we'll have 4,800 times 6%, that's 6 over 100, equals 288 euros. That's the interest earned. So the account will have the original 4,800 plus the 288 euros earned in interest, which will give us 5,088 euros. Next year, the student gets the interest of 6% on all 5,088 euros. So 5,088 euros times 6 over 100 gives 305.28 euros of interest. 
so the account will now have the 5,088 euros that we started the year with plus the interest of 305.28 which gives 5393.28 euros. Now let's generalize that. Let's call the original amount the principal P and the final sum after a period S and the interest rate R and the number of years we're interested in N. So after one year, that is to say N equals one, we have S, the final sum, will be equal to P, the original amount, the principal, times one plus R, the original amount plus the interest. So after two years, when N equals two, S will be P times one plus R, times 1 plus r, which equals p times 1 plus r squared. So after n years, s will be p times 1 plus r to the n. Just note that r is expressed as a percentage, so we should really write r over 100. Remember that when R is 6%, that's 0.06, not 6. So the formula that we need to work with is S equals P times 1 plus R over 100 to the N. So for example, at 6% interest, the account after three years will contain S equals 4,800 times 1 plus 6 over 100 to the power of 3, which gives us 5,716 euros. So we've worked out the formula, which enables us to find out, for any given sum of money, what will be in the account in some future time period, given that we know the interest rate.